Hey, what's up? I'm Astronaut, and welcome back to another video. We are covering Mu VMAX today, but instead of in standard format, we are going to be playing it in the expanded format, uh, which has a card pool of over 11 years now. So uh, there's some pretty exciting options when it comes to Mu, just little ways that we can update it. But the way that I am playing the deck today is reminiscent of expanded Zorark Garbodor from a couple years ago, which is my favorite deck of all time. So it was a lot of fun to get hints of that as I was playing. And uh, and the Mew deck is very strong. I played 20 games on the ladder today and won 19 of them. I'll be showing a couple games in a moment, but first let's go through the list. So our Pokemon and Energy, this is going to be pretty standard. We are playing a 4-3 line of Mew VMAX, four copies of Genesect, one copy of Oracorio, and our only interesting Pokemon here is one copy of Marshadow with the resetting hole ability. Once during your turn, if it's on your bench, you can discard any stadium in play, and if you do, you discard Marshadow and all cards attached. So that allows us to bump uh, any of our opposing stadiums, but it also allows us to bump our own Path to the Peak. We are playing Mew Path in Expanded, um, but because the format is so fast, this is one of the ways that as a three prize deck, we can keep up with some of the really broken combos that exist because of such a massive, massive card pool. Uh, in terms of our energy, we're just playing four copies of Double Colorless, it is great to have four DCE instead of double turbo because double turbo reduces damage by 20. This time in expanded, all of your techno blasts are hitting for 210 instead of 190. But let's go through our supporter line. So we are playing only two draw supporters, one copy of Marnie and one copy of N. And really that is all we need. I don't think we need to increase either of those counts or add any extra draw supporters because of the insane draw power from Genesect. Uh, we are also playing two copies of Guzma, which is a strict upgrade to boss's orders and standard because it allows you to switch as well. And all of your Mews have free retreat. Uh, the final couple supporters we're playing, one copy of Pokemon Ranger to remove all effects of attacks on both players and their Pokemon. That means that if you use Technoblast, you can play Ranger and then use the same Mew VMAX to Technoblast again. It also stops opposing players' Altered Creation GX attacks on RCS Dialga and Palkia GX and uh, Item Lock from Vikavolt V and Neuvern, Neuvern GX. So it's a pretty good card. Good to have one copy of. Um, we are also playing one copy of Faba which Lost Zones a Pokemon Tool, Special Energy, or Stadium card in play. I actually used Faba a lot today in my games, and uh, it was really helpful to have as an out to our own path, as well as a disruptive option for our opponent. And then the final supporter is one copy of Wally. -E. I'm sorry, I don't have the full art yet. Um, if you're going second, on your first turn, you can play Wally -E and evolve directly into your Mew VMAX, breaking the evolution rule. Uh, but that allows you to start Techno Blasting on the first turn of the game if you're going second. Very, very strong. And because uh, Expanded is so fast, it allows you to keep pace and, uh, in a lot of cases, outpace uh, your opponents when you hit the turn one Wally. -E. Now let's go through our items. Most of these will not be a surprise. We are playing four copies of Battle VIP Pass, four copies of Quick Ball, three copies of Ultra Ball because we have so much uh, discard and, and burn in the deck that the fourth one just really isn't necessary. Uh, we are playing four copies of Trainer's Mail, which is a fantastic addition in Expanded. You look at the top four, choose any trainer card you find there and put it in your hand. At best, it gets you the card that you need to hit the rest of your combo. Uh, at worst, you can select nothing, and it's just a minus one in your hand, which allows you to draw more with Genesect. We are also playing uh, four removal cards. Uh, two copies of Field Blower, which allows you to remove up to two tools and stadiums. And two copies of Lost Vacuum, uh, which allows you to remove one stadium or tool. Uh, but 
It also allows you to lost zone a card from your hand, which is helpful if you want to draw more with Genesect. So they each have their advantages. I like the 2-2 split right now. Um, especially with three copies of Path to the Peak, it's nice to have four outs plus the Marshadow, plus the Faba. We are also playing four copies of Power Tablet, of course. One copy of Rescue Stretcher to recover Pokemon. Three copies of VS Seeker to recover supporters. And uh, one copy of Adventure Bag, which allows you to search for up to two tool cards. The tools that we're playing in this deck, we are going with two copies of Floatstone to give Genesect and Oricorio free retreat. It just allows you to hit the attacks with Mew on your first and second turn a lot more often. Uh, one copy of Forest Seal Stone to use your V-Star power and search for any card in the deck. And one copy of Muscle Band to boost damage against everything, not just GXs or Vs, uh, since there's such a wide variety of cards in the expanded format. Just the plus 20 is almost always better than plus 30 against a specific type. And our final card in the deck is our Ace Spec. We're playing one copy of Dowsing Machine. This is the best Ace Spec in Expanded. Um, I know that Computer Search has, gets a lot of love, but I think that with the insane consistency in Expanded, it is usually more helpful to recover than to search something out with a Computer Search. But uh, Dowsing Machine, it's a fifth power tablet. It's an extra supporter. It's an extra path to the peak or a bump to path to the peak. It is everything that we want it to be except for a double colorless energy, but that's okay. We just try and manage those uh, as, as well as we can. And because expanded games are so quick, usually ending in like four to five turns or even less, <laughs> depending on the deck, um, we'll never run out of energy if we're careful with it. So that's the deck. And with that, let's jump into some games. Game one, starting with a Mew V, our hand is not great because uh, we just don't have many outs to Pokemon, but we will play this out as much as we can and then uh, go from there. But we are up against a Grass deck. This is the Rowlet and Alolan Executor GX deck. They play Item Lock Vile Plume and can evolve up into it on their first turn. And then their main attacker is actually Decidueye, which... Uh, prevents damage done to it uh, by Pokemon V. So we are going to have to use Max Miracle in order to uh, attack the Decidueye. But we have two Mew V Max in our deck, so as long as we set both of those up, then we will be just fine. But let's see what we get off of the Trainer's Mail. It's nothing. Uh, so we'll just draw some cards with Genesect. So we got the Forest Seal Stone, that's excellent. And Trainer's Mail, VIP Pass, no. Uh, so we will draw cards just in case we hit the VIP Pass first. And we do, that's why you always draw cards first. Um, getting some more Genesex down. And Fusion Strike System. We would love to get an Energy card. Um, that Mew, yeah, we definitely want to bench Mew. Um, the VS Seeker could be okay if we want to grab Guzma and just get that back directly. Path of the Peak could be good if they're playing some sort of draw Pokemon. So, okay, here's what I'm going to do is grab Path and then play down the Marshadow. And so that way, if they don't replace the Stadium... I can Marshadow get rid of my own path next turn, and if they do replace the stadium, then uh, I can just Marshadow and get rid of their stadium. But they are going to hit us with an N, and there they go with their tag call, go get the Alolan Executor GX. Uh, but looking at our hand, we can play the left side of this hand. Um, the Mu V, V Max, and Fava, we can play all of those down immediately after we get rid of Marshadow. But the right side is going to be uh, locked out because of their Vileplume item lock. 
So they'll attach a capture energy, retreat into Executor and Super Growth to evolve Oddish into Gloom and then Gloom into Vile Plume. And uh, that Vile Plume turns off items on both sides of the board. Slow it down for a moment. Uh, so we found our second Mew Max. That's really important. Um, and we can draw one more card with Genesect, but we are all stuck. So at this point, we're just going to max Miracle. Um, it's not going to two-shot the Executor, but it does mean that we don't need another energy next turn. So we'll just keep doing that, uh, depending on what they're setting up. Uh, I, I imagine this turn that they are going to go for... Uh, the super growth again up into decidui but let, let, let's see what they do so uh guzmahala getting some cards uh, another capture energy which is great for them uh, one of the only ways to search out pokemon uh, without using item cards and the temple of Sinnoh is pretty rough for us as well but that's one of the reasons why we hold Fava is that Temple of Sinnoh is actually very common in expanded format right now. Uh, one of the top decks in the format, Shadow Rider, Calyrex, VMAX, uh, usually plays a couple copies of Temple. So I am just going to Technoblast this turn. I just want to take those three prizes. Our hand is totally dead, and I'd rather that they didn't set up a... Uh, another Decidueye next turn and we can force them to sort of manually find it under item lock but uh, this turn they can uh, attach an energy probably to their active Decidueye but we are not very worried because they're only doing 90 damage with Decidueye so we have a couple turns um, where we can just sit here the nice part, though, is we have Pokemon Ranger, and Pokemon Ranger resets our attacks so that we can use Technoblast two turns in a row, or rather so that we can attack the turn after we use Technoblast. So I am just going to copy Max Miracle, and they can hit us again, but they are four-shotting this Mew VMAX, and we are two-shotting their Decidueye. So uh, this feels like a very positive matchup for Mew if you are able to actually set up some semblance of a board before they item lock you should be pretty well set up so we have a guzma in hand that's great and because they end us it means that oh we can't draw cards they they played their own path to the peak but if that path ever gets replaced uh then we'll be able to draw more cards with genesect but in the meantime we can just keep using max miracle we're down to two prizes and they still don't have a really reliable way to knock us out in one hit. So they're just going to keep using N and seeing if they draw out of it, but it does not look like they're going to. Um, I could use the Forest Seal Stone this turn, but I'm worried that they try and boss up a Genesect and stall me or something like that for a little bit. Um, that being said, I think this game is pretty much sealed up, no pun intended, but uh, we we have the Marnie if we need it, but we don't need it. Um, so let's move on to game two. Uh, game two, let's see what we're up against. Okay, so it's Reggie Drago. Uh, we are definitely starting with the VIP pass, probably grabbing double Mew since we have an Ultra Ball to get a second Genesect. Um, I know that Drapion is not very good or very common in Expanded, but maybe it's just a PTSD from getting Drapions every other round in Standard. Um, I always want two Mews on the field, just in case the worst happens. But uh, let's look at our hand here. We already have a Path, we have a Tablet, don't really want any of those cards. I can afford to burn one Tablet there. I might have to burn the second, but that feels really bad because these Reggie Dracos are going to be pretty hard to knock out. So 
yeah, it looks like I'm just going to pass. And then next turn, I have a Power Tablet, VMAX, and can draw a couple cards. But they are going to go for an Incense. Reggie Drago V Star. Um, it's always helpful to path against, well, against any major deck because of things like this. They want to play down Luminian. They want to play down um, uh, Dedenne GX is another big one. But hmm, that's interesting. The Bird Keeper doesn't feel optimal, but um, we couldn't path because we don't have an out to it ourselves. So. Now on our turn, we have the tablets, we have the VMAX. I think we're just going to have to burn it, which feels pretty bad. Uh, maybe we go for the Wally just to minus one our hands. I would be okay with that. Uh, but it does mean that we need to find a floatstone or an adventure bag to retreat this Genesect, as well as get the energy. So Genesect for two. We got the Float Stone and the Forest Seal Stone, so we have an attack this turn uh, guaranteed with the Seal Stone, but let's draw some cards first and see what we can hit. And it's not very much, so I'm going to go for the, the V-Star power, and I think it's just right to grab the energy and take two prizes here. Being aggressive feels a lot better than just sitting back or uh, hoping that we can hit it off of a Marnie or an N. So yeah, taking our two prizes there, turns out N's prized, uh, but those were fantastic prizes to get. A uh, quick ball to go grab another Genesect. We have an N, we have a path, um, but they are getting started now with a Reggie Drago. And uh, this deck, once it gets set up, is pretty scary. Reggie Draco can copy the attacks of any dragon Pokemon in their discard. And as you might be able to guess, there are a lot of very powerful dragon Pokemon in the expanded format. So they use their V-Star power, uh, grab some quick balls. And get rid of the Forest Stone, going for uh, Luminian. Second Luminian, and a Crobat. That's a that's a lot of draw Pokemon, and none of them are Dedenne. That's surprising. So we know that they're holding that Luminian in hand, though. So if I can path this turn, I would love to do it. Uh, but let's get that Genesect. Play that down. Um... They used Rolling Iron, so we might as well pop the tablets because we're not going to be able to take a one-hit knockout. And draw two cards with Genesect. Uh, we found an Adventure Bag. We found the... I mean, they're playable cards. That's all that really matters here. So I'll just play out my hand as much as I can. Um, I don't want to Genesect a second time. I'd rather just end first. Um, the first Genesect I felt okay with, but when I didn't get what I wanted, it felt like I would be uh, setting myself up for failure. I want the path this turn, right? I should... No? Okay, I, I think I should have taken the path there. That was a mistake, but... Um, well, I guess I'm digging for energy, so maybe I just want to draw as many cards as possible. Never mind, I changed my mind. <laughs> that was the right play. Uh, we just need to hit a double colorless. Okay, and now that we've hit it, we can dig for the path and other things, but until then, um, DC was the priority. Uh, grab the Marsh Shadow, and I can get rid of that with Quick Ball. And I'm not super concerned about thinning my hand all the way down, so I won't discard Guzma or the Lost Vacuum uh, since I got what I needed this turn in the Energy card. Um, grab a, an Ultra Ball, that's pretty good. And then I, I think I'm about done. Maybe I, maybe I play it? No. 
Uh, looks like I'm done this turn, and I'll just Technoblast. And so next turn, we have the knockout on the Reggie Drago, so they need to set up a backup attacker. Let's see what they're able to do. They're starting with the Trainer's Mail and Guzma. So they are just going to take three prizes, and I am totally fine with that. Um, as long as I get a second Mew down and I have the Ultra Ball in hand, then I should be just fine. Okay, so let's uh, promote Mew, free retreat. And we can start with the Ultra Ball since there is another Mew V in the deck. And if we get rid of the uh, V Max and uh, the Guzma, uh, we don't need to. Go we don't want to Guzma this turn, so that's an easy card to get rid of. Uh, but by getting rid of the V Max, it means that we can get better value on our Rescue Stretcher. I forgot it was exactly three, not up to three. Uh, but we can shuffle back the Mew. That's okay. Path is great uh, since I know that they do play things like Crobat and Dedenne. Let's just hold the Path Vacuum, and then we have four Genesex to draw cards with, which is pretty nuts. So uh, we have the Quick Ball, and the the things that I'm worried about here. So there there are only there's only one way realistically that I can lose this game, and that is Drapion. So I actually don't love this play of the Faba. Um, the Faba means that they can't reliably attack with that Gudra next turn, but I would rather hit them with an end to three plus the path and just say that I am so far ahead they can't really do much after that. So I'll Technoblast, take the knockout. Um, if they have Drapion, Switch, and a Stadium Bump, then they win. But otherwise, I don't think that there is anything that they can really do. So let's see what they promote. Probably the Gudra. They do promote the Gudra. And Guzmahala, which means that we have the win in hand. Um, they didn't get rid of our hand uh, with our Guzma. And I'm Feeling pretty good about this one. Reggie Drago is one of the top couple decks in expanded format right now, and is actually the number one point earning deck in the Silver Tempest expanded format. So uh, to get a, a pretty convincing win uh, definitely feels good. But let's jump into our third game. So uh, up, up against a Lone Zation. So we'll start by benching Genesect, uh, hit the VIP pass, and probably grab double Mew. And then we have a quick ball as well, which is great. But uh, we can attach the muscle band and attach the float stone for sure. I kind of want to hold the power tablet because if they have a field blower in hand, then uh, I will need the power tablet next turn. And... I'm presuming that they're playing uh, ADP Zacian, which means that we do actually need a lot of our power tablets in order to take big knockouts. So let's go get another Genesect, draw some more cards. And I'm feeling pretty good about this turn one so far. It'd be great to get an energy. It'd be great to get a path. And we got exactly that combination. So uh, we can draw one with Genesect. Fantastic. This is a, a beautiful opening hand. Uh, we have the Faba to get rid of our path. We have uh, Evolution, Power Tablet to take the knockout on the Activization. And let's see if they have anything. Uh, field Blower. Yeah, so that's, that's why we want to hold the Power Tablet, just to guarantee the knockout on our next turn. Um, attach and Intrepid Sword. Uh, so we just have the win. Evolve into Mew VMAX, Power Tablet, and take a knockout on Zacian. Cool. And uh, sometimes you get quick wins. <laughs> Mew is a really aggressive deck, and uh, with Path to the Peak, 
you can potentially brick people early on. But our final game here, we are starting a double Mew. In standard, there is never a reason to put a benched Pokemon in setup. Uh, but in the expanded format, there are cards like peaking red cards. So even if nobody really plays that card, it is technically possible for them to shuffle your hand away. Uh, so you might as well bench both Mews um, just to guarantee that they stay on the board. But we are up against Lugia V-Star, and this is probably the scariest deck in the expanded format right now. It's Lugia V-Star with Gar Garchomp and Giratina Tag Team GX. And uh, I think they play Naganadel and Guzzlord GX as well. Silent Lab. Wow. Okay, so uh, I'll just pause right here for a moment. Uh, Garchomp and Giratina it is mostly in this deck for the GX attack, GG End. It is... Uh, has the effect, discard one of your opponent's Pokemon and all cards attached to it. But if this Pokemon has at least three f fighting energy attached to it in addition to the attack cost, meaning it has six energy in total attached to this Pokemon, you discard two of your opponent's Pokemon instead. And so the idea with this deck is you use Wally to evolve into the V-Star, uh, ideally on the first turn, you get your Archeops into play. You put three Double Dragon energies on Garchomp and Giratina, and then GG end on your first turn going second and get rid of two of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, I almost grabbed the Marshadow there, but Silent Lab turns off Marshadow. So we'll go for a Genesect, probably get a second Genesect, and then go with the N. I don't think Oricorio, uh, although helpful to draw cards, I don't think it'll ever, ever uh, be helpful in terms of the math here. So I'm just going to discard it and keep the power tablet since I definitely need power tablets uh, to get the Garchomp Giratina as well as a Lugia V-Star KO. Uh, so we have the Lost Vacuum. That's great. And we also have a VIP pass. Even better. Um, I don't want to go quad Mew. I want to take a knockout and bench a Genesect. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'd just go for the one Mew here. Um, and then the question is, do I lost vacuum away the trainer's mail? Or just pass? And I'm going to pass and just hope that the silent lab actually hurts them too. Uh, because on on our turn, there was nothing really that we were looking for besides what we had. They're going for the Wally, evolve up into the V-Star. Uh, they used Battle Compressor turn one, which means that they can V-Star their Archeops into play. And then here comes the big bad... Primal Turbo, putting those double dragons on the active, and uh, they could attack with Inachomp this turn, but it looks like they're going for the attack with Lugia V-Star instead. So are we going to see a double retreat? I guess we are. Yeah, so a, a double retreat into the V-Star uh, and take a knockout on my Mew V, put him down to four prizes. Uh, and then on our turn, we're just looking for power tablets, I think, to take out this V-Star. Um, we are going to win the game in three attacks. Uh, we will take out the Garchomp Giratina for three prizes, the Lugia V-Star for two, and then hopefully an Archeops, or if not an Archeops, just something else for one prize. Um, but... They're taking the first knockout, which means that in the the three attack race, they are going to be ahead of us. Um, so they're using the Garchomp as well, which is very interesting. Uh, the Garchomp can snipe one of our Genesects, which I don't like. But let's see what we're able to draw on this turn. So 
we can uh, promote the Mew, evolve to the VMAX. Uh, we got a power tablet, fantastic. Um, just thinking, how do I play out this turn? So we need to vacuum, and I don't. Th Maybe I can vacuum a Guzma, but I don't. That just feels kind of bad. So, um, in retrospect, I think actually getting rid of the Guzma was the right play, and then we trainer's mail and see if we can hit extra tablets and whatnot. Um, so we can get rid of those and go grab ourselves a tablet. Let's see. How many tablets do we need? I think... No. Yeah, just the N. The N is the right play for sure. Um, I think, thinking back, I am pretty sure I didn't realize this deck played two Guzma. I thought I was just at one Guzma, uh, which is why I didn't loss own that instead of the... Uh, trainer's mail but it worked out in the end we got the last tablet we needed we got some float stones we can play down um and we can get our mew back which is really helpful especially uh if they are able to gg end gx if we only have two mews in play that basically guarantees a a win for them so we need a third Mew and play at all times. But we get the Technoblast. We've put him down to four cards. We weren't able to stick a path, which is unfortunate, but um, we are still in an okay spot. And really, it's going to come down to next turn. Uh, they are going to be taking two prizes this turn, shuffling those energy back in, and then... Uh, loading them onto the Garchomp with Archeops. But fortunately, off those first two prizes we took, we got one of our two missing Genesects. So after they take out this Genesect, we will still have uh, two to draw with this turn. But we have the N in the discard, so we can use VS Seeker on that. Uh, we don't need a Power Tablet, but we do need an energy we need energy v max because we did attack with the active last turn so let's start with the n um put us down to or put us down to four cards them down to two and we're looking for the attack as well as uh ideally the path as well uh, at the end of the turn um so evolve into the v max for sure quick ball the vip pass and go grab a Mew. We just need to draw maximum cards. And let's see what we get. So Fusion Strike System for five. We don't hit the energy, but we do get the path. Um, we can get rid of a Wally. -E. Uh, we can Trainer's Mail. Yep, there we go. Trainer's Mail. Um, Adventure Bag. Yeah, Adventure Bag's great, because we can go get our uh, Forest Seal Stone. And I believe that, yeah, we have not used our V-Star, and we do have the Seal Stone in deck, which guarantees that we get the attack this turn. So I'll attach the V-Star to uh, Genesect, and then uh, put the muscle band on a Mew. That muscle band should go on the active. Uh, I think I was thinking about double turbo reducing damage, but I don't need it for the knockout this turn. And uh, next turn, I won't be able to attack with the muscle banded Mew. So I should have put the band on the one that will be retreating this turn. Uh, small misplay probably won't come back to bite us, but um, just, it, it, we're, we're always interested in playing optimally, so good to point those things out. Um, we are definitely going to path here, and then just take the knockout. I guess I could have played out my hand a little bit more, but yeah, I probably should have used Quick Ball, get rid of the VIP pass. Um, but really it just comes down to, did they draw what they needed? And we'll find out via Seeker. 
to grab a research. That's disappointing. So uh, off the end two, they got a research. Um, and then the V and V star. So that was a, a totally useless hand otherwise, but um, that's going to be the game. They found their uh, Naganadel and Guzzlord GX. It's chaotic order GX says flip your prize cards face up. Then if you have extra energy attached, take two prizes. Uh, so that was our one loss out of 20 games that we played with Mew VMAX. But um, this has been really, really fun. I love playing this deck. Uh, definitely something you should try out in Expanded. Now, there aren't too many changes that I would actually make to this list. Uh, the first cuts that I would make is Rescue Stretcher. I don't think it's very essential, especially given how fast Expanded is. And because you play three VMAX, you should be fine uh, without a Rescue Stretcher. And I could also cut one copy of VS Seeker. These three copies of VS Seeker can sometimes get in the way early game. And so I would be fine cutting down to two, especially since we have Dowsing Machine if we need to uh, desperately recover a supporter. I think the right way to play Mew VMAX in Expanded is to use Path to the Peak in this Field Blower Lost Vacuum combo. If you're not going to play Path to the Peak and you instead just want to be a really consistent Mew deck, I recommend playing the Turbo Meloetta deck, which uh, just plays, I believe, four copies of Meloetta, as well as four Genesect, and because you have Special Charge, an item that allows you to shuffle Special Energy back into the deck, you can just Melodious Echo literally every turn. Uh, so if you are not going to play Path, I would just play the Melodious Echo deck instead of playing the Mew Max line. Some potential additions to the deck. Uh, Battle Compressor is always a good item for consistency allows you to discard up to three cards. It can make your VS Seekers more valuable early game. It can get rid of cards you know you don't need. So after your first turn, you can battle compressor away all of your battle VIP pass. Uh, you can compressor away uh, extra supporters. You could play escape rope as an extra switch out and which allows you to push away whatever's in their active spot if you're not able to take a knockout or just don't want to hit into it. You can play an extra copy of forest seal stone since it's a tool card, it's just an insta play. Um, really, the options are whatever you want. I don't like flip cards, so I don't want to play cramomatic, but if you want to find spots for three to four cramomatic, you can totally do that. In the meantime, I, I am pretty happy with this list. It ran very well for me. Again, I won 19 out of 20 games on the ladder, and Mew is just so much fun. Uh, but thank you all for joining and watching today. Uh, please like and subscribe. It makes a big difference to me just trying to create more videos for fun and share the love of Pokemon. But I will catch you all next time, and uh, adios to PTCGO.